This question starts off by giving us some information about Michael, his utility function, the amount that he earns in his current city, Miami, where he thinks that the amenity value A is equal to 10, uh, the price of housing in Miami is $20, and he chooses a 2,000 square foot house, and spends $40,000 on everything else. We don't really use any of that information for the first couple questions here, so we'll visit it later. The first question says, which of the following is the marginal rate of substitution of H for E? So what is the MRS of subscript HE? Well, the order of, the, of those variables matter. H comes first, E comes second. So in that case, the margin utility of housing will be on the top, the numerator, and the margin utility of everything else will be in the denominator. How do we find the margin utilities? Well, we have to start from the utility function. The margin utility of housing is gonna be the derivative with respect to H of that utility function which in this case is one divided by h because we have the ln of h. Likewise, the derivative of the utility function with respect to e gives us our margin utility of everything else, which is just one divided by e. Now that we've solved for those two margin utilities, we can plug them in and we see that our MRS of h e is one divided by h divided by one divided by e. So make sure that you're comfortable manipulating fractions like this. The denominator in the numerator, which in this case is h, is supposed to belong in the denominator of the entire fraction. Likewise, the denominator in the denominator, which in this case is e, belongs in the numerator. So we can simplify this down to just e divided by h. The next question says, in a city where r equals 10, which of the following represents his optimal choice of h and e? Well, we know that our optimal choice can be found by this relationship. The margin utility of housing divided by the cost of housing, in this case R, is equal to the margin utility of everything else divided by the cost of everything else, which will denote small e. Dewey likes to call this equal bang for buck. So remember that, because I'm sure it'll show up on a test. Let's plug in what we, what we know. We know the margin utility of housing is one divided by H. They give us R is equal to 10 in this case. We know the margin utility of everything else is one divided by E. And we can assume that small e, the cost of everything else, is just $1 because it's not given to us and we're assuming that everything else is in units of one. So the cost is $1 per unit. Well, we can simplify this. The denominators in the numerators belong on the denominator. So h can get sucked down to the bottom and we have one divided by 10 times h and the e can get sucked down to the bottom and we have one divided by one times e or just e. Now we can cr cross multiply and we get E is equal to 10 H. We can divide through by H here to see that 10 is equal to E divided by H. And that's uh, matching one of the answer choices given. The next question says, if his income is denoted M and R equals 10, which of the following gives his optimal choice of H? Well, we know that income can be spent on two things in this problem, housing and everything else. So we can derive this equation for income. M equals the cost of housing R times the amount of housing H plus the cost of everything else little e times the amount of everything else big E. Well, we, are, we already know a couple of those things. We know R is 10 and we know that little e is one. So we can rewrite that. Since this question is asking about a city where R equals 10, we can use the work from our previous question where we solve for his optimal choice of H and E. So remember, we found that E divided by H equal 10. Our question is asking about his optimal choice of H. So we need to keep H in our work. We can solve for E in terms of H. So E divided by H equals 10. We can cross multiply this and see that E is equal to 10 H. So now we can go back to our income equation, which is M equals, and now for H, we know we're gonna keep H in the equation. So for E, we're gonna plug in what we just solved for for E in terms of H, which was 10 H. Now we can combine like terms and we see that M is equal to 20 H. And since we're solving for H, we need to divide both sides through by 20 because the question says, which of the following gives his optimal choice of H? So we know that we'll have H by itself on one side of the equal sign. And this is the answer that we get. M divided by 20 equals his optimal choice of H. This is by far the hardest of the four questions. It says if A equals 20 from his point of view 
and R equals 10 in Gainesville, what it, which of the following defines the income needed in Gainesville to place him at the same level of utility he received in Miami? So we're looking for a level of income that would make him just as happy in Gainesville as he was in Miami. Recall from the question that in Miami, his utility was equal to 28.2. So we can write our utility function in Gainesville as the following, 28.2 units because he has to be just as happy in Gainesville so we know we can uh, set his utility equal to 28.2. We know that A in Gainesville is equal to 20 and the rest is the same. Since it's asking us to solve for M, we need to put H and E in terms of M. Well, further, since R equals 10 in Gainesville, we know we can use the information that we solved for in the last two questions. That was E divided by H equal 10. That was his optimal choice of everything else in housing. And M divided by 20 equals H. That was his optimal choice of housing in terms of his income. So starting from there, we can start to solve this thing. It's going to take a lot of steps, so be patient. We already have H in terms of M. We don't have E in terms of M, but we can have E in terms of H. We know that E is equal to 10H. So we can rewrite our utility function like this. 28.2 equals 20 plus the ln of H plus the ln of 10H because E is equal to 10H. Now we can substitute M divided by 20 in for H. We do so below. We can start to simplify this thing. Just subtracting 20 from each side, we get 8.2 on the left and 10m divided by 20 is the same thing as m divided by 2. So from here, we have to get pretty creative. The ln of m over 20 is the same thing as the ln of 1 tenth times m over 2. All we've done is made that into two separate fractions because m over 20 can be split up into 1 tenth times m over 2. Anytime you have two things multiplied inside of the parentheses of an ln, we know that we can split that up further. So the ln of 1 tenth plus the ln of m over 2 is equal to the ln of 1 tenth times m over 2. This is just one of our rules from logs that we have to remember, natural logs. There's one more rule. The ln of 1 tenth can be split up further because we have a division going on in the parentheses of our ln. So we can subtract those and make them both lns. So the ln of 1 tenth is also equal to the ln of 1 minus the ln of 10. So this is another rule we want to remember. And we can combine like terms. We have two ln of m over 2's, so we just combine those. Now we can add the ln of 10 to each side. And now this is where you want to remember this rule. The ln of 1 is equal to 0. Because after all, what it's saying is e raised to the what number gives me 1. So e is roughly 2 point something. 2 point something raised to the what number gives me 1? Any number raised to the 0 gives me 1. So the ln of 1 simply is 0. And we can get rid of it. So we have 8.2 plus the ln of 10 is equal to 2 times the ln of m over 2. And finally, we arrive at one of our answer choices by dividing through everything by 2. And we see that 4.1 plus 0.5 times the ln of 10 is equal to the ln of m over 2.